<laughs> Testing one, two, three. Yeah, we're good.
Hello and welcome to Lamoy Field here in Waterbury, Connecticut. Today is a special game between the Post University Eagles women's lacrosse team taking on the Felician Golden Falcons. Hello, I'm Robbie Johnson. I'll be your play-by-play -play commentator for this entire game, and this is going to be a lot of fun. Both teams looking for their first CACC victory of the year. Both 0-1 so far. Post coming off a loss on March 16th against Wilmington University. And for the Felician Golden Falcons, they fell in their first conference game as well. That game on March 16th against Jefferson. For the Post University Eagles, they're led by head coach Deborah Delfino in her third season at the helm. And for the Golden Falcons, they are led by head coach Will Mann in his third season as well. Mann is assisted by Amanda Ramirez, who's a grad assistant here with Felician University. And on the Post University side of things, the assistant coaches are Morgan Casiliano and Molly DeBratz. Both teams getting fired up before the first draw control. A mid-afternoon game here on a Wednesday afternoon. The Eagles 2-2 two two on the year. Felician University 1-5. They're on a three-game losing streak, lo looking to end that right here on the road. Who's going to get their first conference win of the year as the referees are now joining together before the opening draw? It's Mary Gazella for Felician University and Sam Targonski for post there in the opening draw circle. And it looks like one of the Golden Falcons players has something wrong with the mask. So she came off the field and was replaced by Natalie Agondo the sophomore from Mexico. So right now, that's where we're at right now. Both teams now have 12 players on the field. We're ready to go. About to do the opening draw. Let's do it. So far, so good for Post. That's Targonski on the faceoff. Victory there. And already a green card is pulled out with a little push. It'll stay with post. So now post has a woman up situation here. Only nine seconds into this contest and post has a woman up opportunity. Top of the 12, inside, spinning right. Around the eight meter arc we go. Dodging in, now back, weaving between defenders. The ball is loose and it's picked up by Felician University. But a nice trail check for Post to recover. It's Roxana Dabizga picking it up. Dabizga the leading point scorer so far on this Eagles roster as that pass is a little out of the reach of a teammate so it will go to Felician University here. That's the first turnover of the game for either side. It's Ileana Rivera in net for Felician University. Almost had her first save of the game there. And now her team is on the pursuit down that far right side. Nice poke check. But it looks like a free position shot is going to be issued here. It's Lauren Bain in goal here for post. 
Bain, the senior from Ontario, and is a Felician University transfer. First free position. And they'll elect to just go around the cage. Amanda Pancione with it in her pocket, trying to engineer the offense, taking her time, a minute 40 in so far here in the first quarter. Around the horn, patient passing, 30 on the shot clock. 60 or 90 second shot clocks, excuse me, here throughout this entire contest. That shot is deflected away. It looks like it hit off a post defender before being swallowed up there by Lauren Bain. Misfiring on the pass, but we'll do it all over again. You see Post really packing in their defense near the crease, and that's why they do it. Intercepting a pass, and they have possession. Very nice defense there, and here they go on the run. And now another penalty issued here. It'll be Kayla Fox in the sin bin here for Felician University. So 12.09 left, already two penalties here on the Golden Falcons. Post unable to capitalize on their first woman up opportunity. They get another one here. Pass into the middle, just a little wide, but they're on the far post. Is Targonski to pick it up? They'll work it around the cage. In front of the eight, a bouncer that's blocked. Fight for it near that left post, but it's picked up by Rivera. Nice job of staying calm, cool, and collected. Outlet pass up is a little wide, but it's picked up by Leslie Garcia and a great defensive play. That's Paige Pfeiffer there with a nice defense. Great ride there from the Eagles. Top of the eight. Swirling around. Pass into the middle. Collected. A little bobble. Fight for it. Pounded into the ground, but it's saved again. Ileana Rivera off to a great start thus far. Eleven oh five left. And does the goal count there? That's the question. Yes, it does. A whistle was blown a little beforehand, but it looks like the goal counts. It's Roxana DeBizka with the first goal of the game. The freshman from Poland now 11 goals on the year to add to her three assists. She's a member of the Polish national team and was a two-time MVP of the European U21 Championship. So she continues to lead this team in all areas of offensive game. A high bouncer past Rivera who's gotten a lot of action thus far. 10.55 in. 10 minutes 55 seconds left. The Eagles lead 1-0 again. Robbie Johnson here with the play-by-play -play commentary if you're just joining us. And now it's 2-0. A really quick response. That's Haley McHenry on the second goal of the day for post.
McHenry with 15 goals and 14 apples last year. That's her fourth goal of the 2024 campaign. So right around 30 seconds after the first goal, it's McHenry cashing in, making it two to nothing post. Another draw control one here by Targonski. Ball is loose and picked up by Felician. It's Pancione going back. A little spin move from Kayla Fox, who has a twin sister on the team named Kenzie Fox. She is number four. Both sophomores from Fleetwood Park Secondary School in British Columbia. And now another green card is issued. It's a one minute releasable here. It'll go against Amber McGee, the senior from Jackson, New Jersey. So the first woman up opportunity for the Golden Falcons. Felician going right to left in their gold yellow away uniforms post in their home grays going left to right. That pass a little wild over the net. Saving it are the Eagles near the end zone. And here they go with it the other way. And what a pursuit there by Anna D'Angelo. Beelining towards the net, the southpaw puts it in the low right corner to give Post a three to nothing lead. The sophomore Mitty with her fifth goal of the year. And that makes it a three nothing game with nine minutes and six seconds left in the first quarter. Another draw control, and Post wins it again. Perfect on the draw so far today. And it's been Dabisco running after it time and time again. Targonski sends it up the field. D'Angelo circling her shot. It's in. She does it once again. Again, a little confusion hearing a whistle a little before the ball went in the back of the net, but it counts with 8.41 left. Targonski already with two goals so far. And both very identical on that far right side, just beelining for the net, cutting to the middle of the eight arc then putting it in that low right corner past Rivera. It's been all Eagles halfway through this first quarter. Another draw one here by Post. Making a few substitutions here. That was Lena Grandel getting her first touch 
sending it up the field to Targonski. Slowly surveying her options. Top of the eight. Back to Targonski. Beautiful feed. That shot is gobbled up by Rivera. Gabrielle Fiora couldn't put it home. And a Gilman pass up the field. Great job getting it to Kayla Fox. One hopper. Great idea, and it just bounces past the goal. Had an open teammate, but they couldn't corral it right near that eight-meter arc, so it'll go to post here as they were the last ones closest to the ball. Beautiful feed, and another one. Another transition goal for the Post Eagles, making it five to nothing. It's Haley McHenry off the Dabizka assist. And just like that, that makes it five to nothing. And the first timeout call today by Coach Mann trying to calm his team down. It's a two minute timeout. It's been all post thus far here on Lemoy Field. The Eagles two and two so far this year. Again, 0 and one in conference play. They beat St. Thomas Aquinas 10 to four on March 6th. And on March 2nd, they were able to beat the University of District of Columbia. That was sort of a close game at first, but then Post pulled away towards the end. So two dominant wins so far, but again, coming off a 21-4 loss to Wilmington University. Last year, the Eagles 4-6 and six in the CACC and went 5-11 and 11 in Deborah Delfino's second year at the helm. And for the Golden Falcons, last year they went 2-8 and eight in CACC play. And they went 3-11 and 11 for their total record last year. And it's been a crazy year for the Golden Falcons. Every game has been decided by double digits. Their lone win was a 16-5 victory. That came against the University of District of Columbia. So both teams have a win against a similar opponent, and right now it's been all post. They won all the draw controls, putting a lot of pressure on Ileana Rivera, and because of that, they've gotten great shots on net. So off of the timeout, Felician University trying to regroup, trying to still fight through this contest. A lot of lacrosse left to be played, so anything can happen here. A lot to be happy about here if you're head coach Deborah Delfino. Again, her third year with Post after serving as the head coach at Monroe Community College. During her season with Monroe Community College, they finished second in the regular season standings and eventually lost in the Region 3 championship. They just missed out on qualifying for the NJCAA National Championships. 
So she has a lot of success winning at other schools, trying to build a great program here at Post. A free position shot here. Down the lane, that shot, she squeaks it in. Roxana Dabizka putting her footprint all over this game thus far. A couple goals, a couple apples, and it's all post-university. They lead by six. It's Julie Ravaza checking out here for the Golden Falcons. For a brief second, she's the leading goal scorer. And now Coach Mann wants her in the center circle taking draws. We'll go up against Targonski that hasn't lost a draw yet. And she'll keep that streak alive. As the Eagles streak down that far left side. Banana peel to the cup. No good. That shot. It squeaks in again. A scoring clinic put on by Post so far today. Make it seven to nothing. As we go back to that logo with the eagle to do another draw. And Targonski keeps the hot streak alive. To the middle, that shot. It's deflected wide. Great job by Rivera to get a paw on it. It was Fiora trying to put another one into the back of the net. Fiora, the grad student from Southington, Connecticut. Went to Southington High School, another great lacrosse high school. Cara Di Stefano racing after it. She claims possession. Slithering towards the net, now backing out. A little juke at the top of the eight. Targonski shielding her defender. Now trying to muscle her way in. Spinning left. Decides to lay it off. A little in and out. A bouncer and that one slides in. It's Cara Di Stefano with the goal. The grad student mini the grad student, Mitty, excuse me, from Neptune, New Jersey, converts again here for post. That makes it an eight to nothing contest, 534 left here in the first quarter. So another lightning bolt into the back of the net for Post, they win another draw. This time they'll work it way back towards the 12 meter fan. And now they're rushing up the field. They've done a great job in their transition offense. And that's another green card. Looks like it's gonna be against Kenzie Fox. Almost tripped the player she was defending there, so it's gonna be one minute here as a penalty for the Golden Falcons. Five twelve left. Another woman up opportunity for post. 
keeping their foot on the gas here. Racing after it is Anna D'Angelo. Did she get to it first? Yes, she did. Oh no, they're saying it's Felician University's ball. And it's Rivera with it, the goalie. And now she goes back to her vacant net. So Felician got to the ball first. That's why they're trying to clear it here. But a nice steal by Post. Here they come with it. Near the top of the 12, Di Stefano. Feed to the middle, deflected wide. Loose ground ball picked up by Post. Nice feed. The juke and the score. Nice ball fake by Fiora. And then goes Penthouse Parm to make it 9 to nothing. Post. Ileana Rivera, her team in a 9 nothing hole, and now Coach Mann is going to put in Alexis Lambertino. Lambertino will be in between the pipes for the time being. A little stoppage here to wait for Lambertino to get into the net. Wearing number 30, the senior that attended Sterling High School is from Hamilton, New Jersey. This year, 0-1, giving up 20 goals in her only appearance, had 12 saves as well. And there we go, the first draw control win by Felician University. Mary Gazella sprinting up the field like a gazelle, but now the ball is loose on the floor. Who's going to pick it up? And Post wins it back. Near the midfield stripe. Up the field to Tartgonski. Beautiful idea, but just a little too high. A teammate backing up there for Post. 340 left. The Eagles a commanding 9-0 lead. Robbie Johnson here on the play-by-play -play commentary if you're just joining us. Di Stefano, double teamed, working her way to the left, lays it off. Dabiska, Di Stefano, oh what a shot! Some low heat between the legs of Alexis Lambertino, and look at this, double digit goals in the first stanza for the Eagles, 10 to nothing, three minutes left. A beautiful goal from Cara Di Stefano. Starting low with the shot, finishing low. And that had a lot of giddy up on it. Getting into the back of the net in a blink of an eye. Mary Gazella at the draw here. Won her first one, and she lost the second one just now. It'll be with Post. And that's the only draw that Targonski has lost so far today. She's been magnificent. After that brief pause, we're back in action. Targonski muscling her way between three defenders. And it's a shooting space foul. Coach Mann did not like the call, thought it should have been a charging foul. 
but Targonski will have it here on the free position shot. One twenty left, a running clock. Boom, Chakalaka. Targonski again. And now a little extracurricular activity. Coach Mann still expressing displeasure here with under a minute left. And now they're saying the goal didn't count. We're going to redo the shot. So it looks like the golden count will do it again here with Targonski at the top of the eight. Here she goes. And she'll score it again. This one will count. Light on her feet and blazed it right past the goalie to make it 11 to nothing post. And the clock will continue to run for the rest of the first quarter. So the first free position shot was waved off. The referees making Targonski do it again. And the second time she cashed in, making it 11 to nothing. Ball fumbling around, who wants it? And it ends up in the hands of the Golden Falcons. Trying to get a shot off, but the ball was tipped. It looked like it was poked out of play as it goes out of bounds near that end zone. That's how the first quarter ends. Domination from the outset for the Post University Eagles. Contributions from many players, including Targonski at the draw, also facilitating and scoring a little bit too. Roxana Dabiska, a heavy contributor in the beginning. And it was Cara Stefano adding a lot of firepower to the offense towards those last few minutes of action. So we'll take a two-minute break here from Lemoy Field. Post 11, Felician University nothing. A lot of lacrosse left to play here, so you'll want to stay tuned for some more action.
Welcome back to Lemoy Field. 15 minutes in to this matchup between the Post University Eagles and the Felician University Golden Falcons. If you're just joining us, you missed an offensive barrage for the Eagles leading 11 to nothing. They dominated with their draw controls, possessed the ball for most of that first quarter, and because of that, they put a lot of pressure on both goalkeepers for the Golden Falcons. Felician University started with Ileana Rivera in net and then replaced her with Alexis Lambertino. It didn't matter because Post kept putting the pressure on the Golden Falcons. A lot of great opportunities in the pay dirt area. And because of that, the goal number matches Targonski's Number on the back of her jersey, unfortunately, doesn't win that, but great job of fighting for that loose ball, and the Eagles go the other way. Behind the cage, Targonski. Weaving near the top of the 12, Di Stefano. A little bounce pass to her teammate. Confusion there, but it somehow ends up in the pocket of a stick for Post University. Dabiska pushed away, and that shot bounces in. It's Dabiska who was pushed off her line, falling towards her left, and still bounced it past the goalie. And that makes it 12 to nothing. The referee looking at the stick for an extended period of time there. Here we go, Mary. But all is good. That's another one for Dabiska, making it 12 to nothing post. And after the draw, it'll be won here by Felician. They're on the attack. The defense for Post has been stifling, and that's why the Golden Falcons haven't got a clear shot off on goal. Di Stefano racing in on defense here for the Eagles. Fox, over to Amadrudo, back to Kenzie Fox. The bench telling Fox to switch it, and she does. Around the net we go, and a big hit. That's a yellow card against Isabella Longo. Almost a football hit near that right post. It was Amadrudo trying to wrap around and place it in the back of the net. And place it in the back of the net. So right now, it's a free position here for the Golden Falcons. They'll elect to work it around. That pass inside, intercepted. Great instincts there by Lotana Nuwabadu. Targonski, she's tripped to the turf. The ball was loose on the carpet, but a foul is called. Free position here for the Eagles. Off that hit on the other end, Felician University had a two minute penalty, they were woman up and still has that penalty in play here. Now the penalty at 112 left. Free position. Targonski racing to the net 
And her shot is denied. Great save by the Golden Falcons. Ileana Rivera back in net. And that's big for her getting that confidence boost. And Madrudo up the field. Julie Ravaza, the leading scorer on this team. 12 goals and 4 assists. Amanda Pancione with it in the pocket of her stick. Taking her time. 50 on the shot clock. 10.30 left, post 12, Felician, University nothing. A scrum for it near the eight. Still loose on the carpet, now kicked around by Felician University. And there's Latana once again. And a frustration foul committed by Claudia Goncalves. Swiping at Nuwabadu's head almost with the pocket of her stick. And now all penalties have been erased as well. But now it'll be post with the woman up opportunity. It'll be for two minutes. As that was a very dangerous stick play from Goncalves. In the middle. That shot turned aside. Ileana Rivera with the save. And her pass is stolen. The wraparound, it's in. Targonski. Trailing Ileana Rivera, sniffing a steal. She got it, wrapped around, and then rifled it into the net, making it 13 to nothing post. 11 goals tallied in the first quarter, already two here thus far in the second. 9, 10, and ticking left. And now the penalty's offset after that goal. It was another women up opportunity that the Eagles cashed in on. Targonski in the face off circle here with Gazella. And Targonski wins another draw control. Nuwabadu up the field. Dabizga circling behind. Trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Kayla Fox, but dishes it back. Dabiska gets it right back. Her pass airmailed. Running for it is Targonski, and she ends up with it. Bothered from behind. That shot in front of the net is ushered aside. Rivera got a piece of it, and Post will have it behind the Golden Falcons' goal. Centering pass, Di Stefano couldn't get a clean shot off, and now there's a scrum for the loose ball here, and it's picked up by Post. And there's another goal for Post. The stick to itiveness with the ride, winning the ball back, and then blazing it past. Ileana Rivera making it 14 to nothing. Six fifty-three left here in a half number one. Two touchdowns on the scoreboard here for Post. Fourteen to nothing. 
Weird bounce and Targonski wins another draw. Dabiska blazing past everybody. Coast to coast, another one. That was easy breezy for Roxanne Dabisga. And that makes it 15 to nothing with 6.15 left here in the first half. You love the intensity that, that the Eagles are playing with right now, not letting their foot off the gas, continuing to put a lot of pressure here on the Golden Falcons. And we know it's been an up-and-down season here for Post on trying to play 60 minutes of lacrosse. And that's why no matter what here, they're trying to do that in this game just to create positive momentum moving forward. Draw control victory. Flip pass from DiStefano. Isabella Longo. Behind the cage. Amber McGee. Blows by her defender. That shot just kicked aside by Rivera. Post wins the battle to the ball. They'll get it back. And a free position shot will be given to post here. It'll be towards the top of the eight arc, more towards that right side. Towards the net, and it's bounced in. Amber McGee wasting no time to give her team a 16 to nothing advantage. as Anna D'Angelo sprinting off the field with a big smile on her face. All smiles so far for the Eagles, 348 left. They lead 16 to nothing. A new Golden Falcon in the face-off circle. But the same old story, another draw control won here by Post. Dabiska double teamed, lays it off. That shot is kicked away. Post has it back, DiStefano rifles it in. A low rocket into the low right, or excuse me, low left corner. With three minutes left, 17 to nothing. Another draw one here by Post, and you can tell they are having a lot of fun out there. Coach Delfino always just wants them to love the game and enjoy every second of it. And she has a long lineage in lacrosse as she grew up learning and loving the game from her father, Rocky Delfino. Rocky has spent the better part of two decades coaching lacrosse at Monroe Community College, and that was the last stop for Deborah Delfino. Her father 
the NG or the NJ, NJCAA National Coach of the Year in 2005 and inducted into the Monroe Community College Hall of Fame in 2018. So a lot of success for the Delfino family when it comes to lacrosse. Dabiska double teamed once again. Lays it off, passes off the pocket of the stick for post, but they get it right back with DiStefano behind the cage. 67 seconds left in half number one. Weaving between defenders, but post couldn't pound it past Rivera. Nice hustle by Rivera. It looks like she won the race to the ball. And she did. It'll stay with Felician University. They'll try and make a last minute push here. 40 seconds left. Down by a lot, but trying to gain some confidence going into the locker room. Racing down the field, but a beautiful trail check. Ground ball won by Post, but another big hit. It's against Goncalves with 15 seconds left. That's her second big hit of the day. She had to sit out originally. The refs say play on, three seconds left. DiStefano, Hail Mary, scooped up by Rivera. And that's how the first half concludes here at Lemoy Field. Post University enjoying themselves on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. They have been having a lot of fun. 17 goals in the first half. A collection of players contributing. And still 30 minutes left to keep the good times rolling again. They lead 17 to nothing after one half of play. Robbie Johnson with the play-by-play -play commentary will be back in just a moment to analyze the first half once again and continue to move forward with this one. So you'll want to stay tuned to this big game of CACC action.
Welcome back to Lemoy Field here in Waterbury, Connecticut. One half in the books as the Post University women's lacrosse team has dominated in this conf contest against Felician University, winning 17 to nothing with 30 minutes left. And it's Targonski with another draw control opportunity has been dominating for her team. She has set the tempo there and it's a big reason why they're on top. But a nice start to the second half here for the Golden Falcons. Great way to start and now they're on the pursuit. You could hear in the huddle, Coach Mann for Felician University just wants his team to stay together. Continue to fight for another 29 and a half minutes here. Kenzie Fox lays it off. Julie Ravaza. The leading point tallier has been quiet so far. Hasn't had many opportunities on net. Give credit to this stifling defense for Post University and another nice play there. Trying to scoop it up but pushed out of bounds a little bit. Not enough to draw a penalty so Felician University will get the ball right back. Nice pump fake there from Leslie Garcia. Now the shot clock's at five, they've gotta hurry. That's an errant pass, shot clock at one. And that's a shot clock violation. Slowly dwindling down in Felician University was just working the ball around, didn't have much urgency to try and get a shot off. So Post will claim it back here, already racing towards the middle of the field. Anna D'Angelo. She's one of the mem many members so far this scoring party. Twirling around, top of the 12. That wild pass picked up by her teammate. Amber McGee lobs it over. Gabrielle Fiora, a couple goals in her game so far. Flips it behind. That bouncer just over the net took a high hop over the crossbar. Let's see who it goes to. It'll stay with post. Shot clock is at 19. Now at six, they've got to do something quickly. Now at three, racing towards the net. A fastball just a little wide. And that'll be a shot clock violation too. It should go to the Golden Falcons here with 11.43 left. They're down big at 17 to nothing, post on top. Oh no, they're saying it's a free position here. They're saying it's a free position. Anna D'Angelo will just circle it around the 12 and they'll work it behind the cage here. It said zero, there was a little confusion as to what was going on with the clock. It hit zero, so I thought it was gonna be a, a shot clock violation, but then they issued a free position here. And they finally decide it is a violation for the possession. Rivera. Tries to send it up the field, but it's stolen by Targonski. 
That's the third time that's happened today. The Eagles hounding Rivera in the net. Not even letting her breathe, trying to get a pass off to a teammate up the field. Fiora. Dumps it off to Pfeiffer. Fiora with it again, being patient. A few handoffs at the top of the 12. Targonski lost it but reclaimed it. A little dodge towards the net. Bumping around. D'Angelo fires and scores. First goal of the second half for post. And that makes it 18 to nothing. That was Anna D'Angelo. The sophomore cashing in once again. So a lot of Eagles padding their stats here in this contest. Both teams making a few changes. Felician much improved here with the draw controls, but Post steals it right back. Domahashka lays it off. Targonski zigzags. Again, both teams looking for their first CACC victory during the 2024 campaign. Post two and two to start overall. It's Felician who's one and five so far this year. Trying to get over a three game losing streak. And that shot just slithers by Rivera. Off her stick and then slowly bounces in. With 8.35 left. The clock is going to continue to run because it is a double-digit deficit here for Felician University. That goal making it 19 to nothing. And you see in this circumstance, Coach Mann trying to use a few more people in the draw control circle, just mixing it around, trying to see what opportunities will get them more success. And this is a, uh, this is a good time to do that, especially when you're down by this much, you know, just wanting to finish the game strong. It's important to focus on the positives here and see what they can do moving forward to carry some positive momentum into their next contest. In front of the net, and it bounces by Rivera once again. Targonski scores again, and now that's 20 goals here for Post. It's their season high here in the goal scoring department. Scored 18 goals against the University District of Columbia. They won that game 18 to two earlier in the year. So they've broken that record so far this year with 20 so far in this one. Still 645 left here in the third quarter.
gobbled up by the Golden Falcons. And we see Felician University likes to play it so slow, be very patient around the top of the arc. A little more aggressive there with that pass. And because of it, nice hustle by Post. They win the ball back. Beautiful pass up the field to Fiora. Amber McGee rushing down the field. Slowly finding the best option here. Loose ground ball on the carpet. Who's going to pick it up? The Eagles have it. Nice poke check there from the Golden Falcons, just unable to pick it up. 37 on the shot clock for the Eagles. A little spin in front of the net, and she scores. Amber McGee once again. A nice little spinorama, a dipsy do towards the net, and that makes it 21 to nothing. Twenty-one to nothing. What a great performance. And it's a shutout so far for Lauren Bain, who has a birthday today. Couldn't have asked for a better birthday present so far. On the other side, Felician University trying to weather the storm. And with Coach Willman's experience, they definitely will be able to do so. He joined the Golden Falcons as an assistant in February of 2021 and then became the interim head coach in 2022 before becoming the official head coach in 2023. He spent five summers as a clinic and camp coach with Tri-State Lacrosse and has played a little bit with the Slovakian national team at the 2019 World Indoor Lacrosse Championships. So has done a lot of great things for the sport of lacrosse and continuing to give back here at Felician University. And this is a really difficult conference. A lot of great teams they're vying for some postseason bids and just looking to get the best seed possible. Ravaza. With a little under 30 here on the shot clock. Coach Mann trying to tell her players to clear out in the middle so there is a little room to work. But a great play defensively. And because of that, Post wins it back. And no matter what the score is, you give credit to Coach Mann for continuing to coach his team. Trying to bring the best out of them in any situation. Nice play by Amanda Pancheon. Right, 
almost won it back, but Post around the 12 meter fan. Di Stefano. Now behind the cage. Pfeiffer wanted it, cutting towards the goal. She didn't get it, but a fight for it. Di Stefano hits it to her teammate. That shot a little wide. Almost a crazy goal scored by Haley McHenry after a pass was batted from Di Stefano to McHenry. Now she's with it behind the cage. Play and toss with Targonsky. 30 seconds left in quarter number three. All post university, they lead 21 to nothing. Falling to the turf. It looks like that was Paige Pfeiffer. Yes, it was, but now there's a loose ball. It'll stay with Post. Three seconds left. Trying to get a shot off here, but great defense from the Golden Falcons. Not letting anything happen there for Post. And that's how the third quarter ends here at Lemoy Field. Post University tallied four goals in that quarter, 21 to nothing, a season high in goals scored, 15 minutes left before they win this one. Stay tuned.
back in action here at Lemoy Field. The Eagles lead the Golden Falcons here in the Battle of the Birds, 21 to nothing. Both fighting for that first CACC victory. And right now it looks like Post is going to get it. They have possession to start and they'll push it up the field. Di Stefano. Looking to orchestrate the offense, Targonski lays it off to a teammate. Behind the net we go. About half of the shot clock milked away here. McGee over to Fiora. A little flip pass behind. Targonski has been the center of everything so far today. Into the middle. That low shot is gobbled up. It's Ileana Rivera with the save. Flings it up the field aimlessly and gives it right back to post. The Eagles bench loving that effort from the defense as Di Stefano working at the top of the 12. She gets it back, fakes a shot, flips it back to Targonski. Pfeiffer. Being very patient here in the fourth quarter. This is the largest lead Post has had all year. Their biggest win by 16 coming against the University District of Columbia. And that's a turnover. The ball goes back to the Golden Falcons. But they win it right back, the Eagles. A beautiful ride. That pass air mailed. Fight for it near the end zone. And the Golden Falcons win the fight. Post University going right to left in their home grays. Felician University in their away golden yellows going left to right. Double team, spinorama, and it's stolen. Beautiful job by Felician University on the defense. Trying to clear. But the pass is intercepted. Loose ball on the carpet. Who's going to pick it up? It's Targonski. But Felician University wins it right back. Back and forth we go. Post dominating with the ride. It's been really difficult for the Golden Falcons to clear it today. in front of the net. That shot turned aside. Nice stop by Rivera. She continues to compete. You got to give her a lot of credit for that.
Fiora dancing around with 30 on the shot clock. As the horn is blown there, possession goes back to Felician University. And another turnover. Going downhill. And it'll be a free position shot for post. Paige Pfeiffer with it in the pocket of her stick. Looking to make it goal number 22 with 9.09 left. And she does, but barely. Rivera got a foot on it. But the ball just kept bouncing into the back of the net, making it 22 to nothing with 8.45 left in this one. Targonski back in the game. She'll take this draw control against Mary Gazella, who won the first draw control in this game for Felician University. It took the Golden Falcons nine tries to win that first draw control. Now it's a woman up opportunity for Felician University. A two minute releasable. Fires and scores. Ali Emma Drudo sprinting down the field and blazes it past the goalie. And that makes it a 22 to one game, the first goal of the afternoon for the Golden Falcons. And now there's a confusion as to whether it was releasable or unreleasable. So we'll try and figure that out for you. Should have been releasable and it looks like that's the case. And the Golden Falcons convert on a woman up opportunity making it 22 to one with just north of seven minutes left. Six and a half minutes left before Post wins this, this one. And moving forward, they'll continue CACC play against Holy Family University. That game in Philadelphia on Saturday at noon Eastern time. And then they'll play at Caldwell University on Tuesday, March 26th. And then they'll finish their three-game road trip on April 9th, that's another Tuesday at the University of Bridgeport. Game time at 4 p.m. Eastern time. As that goal 
will be taken away for the time being. The ref's trying to sort everything out. And after that three-game road trip here for Post University, they'll take on Georgian Court University on Saturday, April 13th, right here at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You can watch that game on YouTube or on Huddle. Free position here for the Eagles. Towards the net. Up and over Rivera. Another goal. Twenty three to one. And with that twenty third goal, that ties a record that they set back in 2022. It's the most goals they've had in nearly two years. And they have an opportunity to even break that with a little over five minutes left. And if this result holds, this will be the largest victory for the Eagles since 2016. Couldn't keep the shutout, but still a great performance. Lauren Bain still in goal for the Eagles. Lena Grandel checking out. Coming back in is Dakota Jez for Post University. Jez, the sophomore from Cortland Manor, New York, attended Lakeland High School. And you saw Grandel, a big impact defensively in the second half from Elmont, New York, attended Elmont Memorial. Has a goal on the year and just continues to be a staple with the back three here for post. Big wind gusts here at Lemoy Field. It's been really breezy throughout the entirety of this game now, starting to pick up even more as the game is about to finish. Centering pass, that shot is stopped. Snared by Lambertino, who just went into the goal for Rivera. But she throws it away right back to post. Great job of driving that top hand up, though, to secure the save. Pass to the middle. Tipped. And scooped up by Lambertino. But another pass is intercepted. Stefano continuing to bring the heat. And the quick one-timer goes in. That was in and out of the pocket of her stick very quickly. And there it is, the most goals scored by the Eagles since 2022. 24 of them in this one. 3-12 left. The score is 24-1. to
out in front. Two ten left, Targonski swings it around, Roxanne DeBizka. Gotten a lot of rest today with her team out in front. That shot, a little high, it'll stay with post. As we take a look at Felician University's upcoming schedule. They'll try and have short term memory, their next game on the 23rd on their home turf against Georgian Court University. That'll be at Tryon Field in Rutherford, New Jersey. And then on the 26th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, they'll take on Dominican University of New York up in Orangeburg, New Jersey. Or excuse me, Orangeburg, New York. Dominican finished 9-1 in the standings last year. That was good for first place. So definitely one of the top teams to look out for in the CACC. On March 30th, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Felician University will take on Virginia State University. That'll be another home game. And that free position shot is turned aside by Lambertino. Great save. Then on April 3rd, at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, another CACC game at Caldwell University. Inside, Di Stefano. And that one goes through the wickets of Lambertino. Hard to see at first, but Di Stefano adds another goal to the tally, making it 25 to 1. The 25th goal with about 25 seconds left in this one. And the game ends how it started. Domination with the draw control. Post University wins this one in commanding fashion, 25 to one. Lauren Bain on her birthday, only one goal conceded late here in this one. And it was so dominating for Post University that the game clock continued to run almost halfway through the first quarter. That's how good they were in this one. A lot of contributions across the board. Stifling defense that didn't allow the Golden Falcons to get many shots on goal. Sam Targonski led the charge with a bunch of draw control wins, some goals and apples. The same with Roxana Dabisca, Cara Di Stefano, continuing to dominate, especially towards the end of the first quarter. So congratulations to the Eagles on this one. They win 25 to one. And both teams will look to charge on here and see CACC play. As the Eagles win their first one, they go 1-1 one one now into their next competition. Felician University now 0-2. They'll look for their next possible win on Saturday afternoon. I'm Robbie Johnson. Again, thank you guys for tuning in to this one. Post wins 25-1. to one. We'll be able to talk to some of the players after the game, so you'll want to see that, especially on our social media pages. Should be fun. Post wins. Thank you guys for tuning in. Good night, and we'll see you very, very soon. Here from Lemoy Field.
Oh, sorry, I'm reading. You can't put it on. I need the mic. Oh, sorry. But how are we supposed to hear him? Oh. No. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So who puts this on? We could both hold it. Just hold it. Oh, mine can flip. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> oh um. Should we just? Should I put? Yours it? can flip too. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's okay. him talking. We'll just speak into the mic. <laughs> oh. And then should we just? Do just go like this? It's like a mini mic. <laughs> oh, do we look at the camera or? Hello and welcome back here to Lemoy Field. We're with the victorious team here. Robbie Johnson alongside Lauren Bain and Sam Targdonsky. Congratulations to both you guys. Great Thank game. You. and Thank you. Happy birthday to you Thank as you. well. How's it feel to have a great performance in net? It feels amazing. Um, a big birthday present against my old school. Something nice. Pretty incredible. And your teammate over here, great in the draw control, set a lot of momentum for you guys. How are you able to execute so well there? Um, honestly, we've been doing a lot of draw work and teamwork, so I guess it all clicked today for us. Because I feel like the draw really is a good like 3v3 battle, and we have a lot of connection, and we can be very versatile with our circle players too. And you said a lot of teamwork there. How do you carry that momentum into your next competition? Um, honestly, we're just going to build off these positives, take what we did right, bring them into Saturday, build off of the little things that we can work on, and just keep it going. Love that. And last but not least, of course, big win. How are you going to celebrate the birthday? I'm going to go to Hibachi with my team. We love that. <laughs> hibachi for the victory. Congrats on the win. 25-1 to 1 your final score here from Lemoy Field. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good job. Hibachi with my team. <laughs> hibachi with my team. <laughs> Thank you.